Hello, welcome to Sunny Irabo Live. Yes, the maiden edition on Lagos Television, and I'm hoping this first April will be a big one for you and me and everyone else who is having a peaceful thought about how Nigeria should grow, and also having a peaceful thought how your community should grow and how things should work as a nation, as a sovereign, as an African, as a polity of the world. Okay, welcome. Our guest today is, of course, a man that many of you may know or hear about or have listened to at some point in time or another. But, you see, he's a man after my heart because he does some of those things I try to do. He does it so well and so perfectly. But when I heard that he was going to be a presidential aspirant, I said, wait a minute. Okay, from talk talk to serious power play. Okay. Now, we're talking of Mr. Fela Durotoye. Now, who is this gentleman? He is the CEO of Gemstone Group and has been on the forefront of the movement to build a new Nigeria. He went to Kennedy School of Government Executive Education Program of Harvard University, High Impact Leadership for a Better Society Program at Yale University, and indeed the Leadership, is, uh, well, I think this is uh, the Leadership Institute, Arlington Certified Leadership Coach of the John Maxwell Team. And then Lagos Business School concluded a police, police training program at the Nigeria Police Training School and received Distinguished Student Award at graduation. Now, wait a minute. After all the talk and everything, he's also a policeman. <laughs> ah, okay, let me just welcome you, <laughs> Mr. Fela first, first of all, <laughs> let, me, let me say, you know, that you know how much I love you, um, <laughs> Uncle Sonny. I think Uncle Sonny is a, is a legend. In, uh, in broadcasting, and I want to say thank you for all that you've done in showcasing and leading Nigeria um, and grooming and nurturing a, a next generation of people. And I'm honored <laughs> to be on this mating edition of Sony Rabo Live, and I know that this is going to last for many, many, many years to come. Thank uh, you. Thank you very much for having me. And thank you for coming. Happy Easter to you. Happy Easter indeed. <laughs> Another handshake <laughs> to that. You. Yes. Okay, now, here you are. We've heard so much about you. We know you as a motivational speaker. Mm. Now you want to be our president. Mm -hmm. Nigerians are clamoring for a younger leader mm -hmm. because they need to go forward <laughs> according to them. <laughs> well, is it the problem of leadership or is it the problem of the followers? Well, I mean, you've, you've, you've put a few things in, in, in that package. So yeah. I, I, I think um, I would come back to the, to the essence of the problem. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that, you know, I, I know that a lot of people know me as a motivational speaker mm -hmm. because much of the time when they see me doing my, my public... Uh, mm -hmm you know, speaking, yeah. that's when they kind of like encounter me. So for instance, most Nigerians may not know that I'm actually a, a management consultant, okay. that I'm a leadership expert, and that I help organizations, um, you know, across Ni you know, Nigeria, in the banking sector, in oil and gas, in the multilateral field, uh, in government. I've helped to, to do culture transformation projects. Um, and all of that. So, I will take so, 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 so <laughs> my job in, in, in my, my day job, as I always mm -hmm. say, yeah. is really one of helping businesses start and scale up. Mm -hmm. um, more importantly, helping businesses find ways to cut costs and improve profitability and grow market share. Mm -hmm. um, I've also helped really define values for our, for, you know, our society. One of the, the what we one of the work we've done in the social education, um, social social impact space is is was the work we did in education with uh, Oyo State many years ago. Mm -hmm. Many people don't realize that we actually trained 48,150 students and 5,000 uh, teachers mm -hmm. in 10 days in 22 centers in Oyo State. Whoa. And Oyo State at the time previously had been on, on the NECO ranking about number 28, 27. But the students that we took actually performed and, and brought Oyo State to number four in, in one year. Oh. So number four position of performance. That's a good way to look um, at the fact that you're seeing so, so, what you're so doing. So yes, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I mean, some, m some people don't know that uh, we, that, you know, uh, we did a project called Mushi Makeover, mm -hmm. right, in as far back as almost nine years ago, 2009, mm -hmm. that we gathered about 2,000 people together and we painted 296 houses in Mushi without asking anybody for a penny. I wasn't thinking about anything political. We were just trying to get people to believe that it is possible for you to use your, your hand 
to make a big difference in the lives of people. We trained over 120 youths that didn't have any job, didn't have anywhere they were going, mm -hmm. and we partnered with Berger Paints, and Berger actually trained them for a week, and also at the end of it, gave them the tools for them to, to do their trade. I'll tell you a very special um, story, Uncle Sammy. Um, about four years later, mm -hmm. I needed to paint my house, and a gentleman came with about six boys and they were going to paint <laughs> the house. <laughs> and they, and they gave me the bill. And I noticed that they had given the bill for all the costing of the material, but he didn't charge me anything for labor. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't sure what kind of game he was trying to play. Mm -hmm. So of course, I called the guy and said, look, what's going on? You have no sh How much are you going to charge me? Don't come and say you started work now. <laughs> then you come and tell me. And the guy looked at me and started laughing. And, and as he was laughing, tears was coming out of his eyes. He said, you don't even know. I'm one of the youth that was unemployed. I didn't know what I was going to do with my life about four years ago when you came to Mushin, he said, and you taught me how to paint. And today, they called me to say, I should come and paint your house. I cannot charge you. Whatever yeah. you want to give me, give me. He mm. says, you've changed my life. How did that affect you? That I cried. <laughs> 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 because when you said, you yeah. tears came well, out of yeah, your voice. Yeah, because I, I, couldn't, I, couldn't, I didn't know. I didn't know. You know how sometimes you do good things, but mm -hmm. you don't know how much, how much it changes other people's lives. Right. I mean, and the, one of the last things I want to talk about is, I mean, and the government of Anambra State about four years ago adopted the same values that we've been teaching that over 300,000 people have adopted. Mm -hmm. Over 313 schools in Lagos and in Nigeria have adopted. And those values are very simple. Make a positive impact on everyone you meet and everywhere you go. Be a solution provider and not a part of the problem to be solved. Be a role model worthy of emulation. Be your best in all you do, particularly what you're naturally good at. Do the right thing at all times, regardless of who is doing the wrong thing. Make value time and make it the best use of it. Care and show respect to all through your words and your actions. Consciously build a great legacy starting now, today, and every day. Live a life of integrity and honor, and make your family, your nation, and your God proud. And uh -huh. a few weeks ago, this yeah. I the government they I, you know, I was I was running a project for for the government of Anambra State, and the governor said, please, can the commissioner for education tell them how what they had done? Mm -hmm. And by the time she finished telling me the stories and how it had, the, I think the most important thing was to say that in the last exam that Anambra State did. And they didn't even use their own teachers as examinators. Mm -hmm. They didn't have one, um, listen to this, Uncle Sonny, one exam malpractice was not found in the whole of Anambra State. Not one. Hmm. So in fact, you have to begin a journey somewhere. So the somewhere. values that we were teaching yeah. have been ingrained into every student in Anambra State, in, in public schools and in private schools. And what it's done is not only helped Anambra State to, to remain number one among the legal states, mm -hmm. Anambra State has produced the best student for NECO uh, and, and WIAC right. exam for since 2010. Huh. And, and now they are not even having any exam malpractice. So the values can change not only the lives of students, but it's changing organizations, it's changing nations. Lagos State, for instance, a few years ago, mm. we trained at the top 500 civil servants of Lagos State, and I didn't charge Lagos State a cover for it. Let me ask you a question. You see, these are beautiful points you're raising, but you know what's going on in the country right now. Yes. The level of critiques, or criticism more like, yes. rather than critiques, yes. uh, is very high. Yes. But they're all negative. Yeah. And then there's a very forceful and hardcore, you know, accusational approach mm -hmm. to solving problems. Mm -hmm. But what you're saying is that the areas you have dealt with, mm -hmm. you think, I mean, um, there's been a beautiful... Oh, yes. I mean, I mean, because it 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 don't. Yes. Is it the same today? No, I mean... Is Anambra State the same today? <laughs> well... Are you monitoring these things? Oh, yes. Well, I mean, so with Anambra, we just got that report last last week. Okay. Last weekend. So that's a gr good report. Okay. With Ibadan, Ibadan was a very strange situation because, in fact, Ibadan was one of the reasons why I knew that we had to do something about government. That, in part, also helped mm -hmm. me to come in. Yeah. So in 2008, we were invited to do this intervention. The results came out in 2009. But the governor wanted to know in 2000 and, you know, whether it was what we did yeah. that helped them or not. So in 2010, they decided not to, to engage us. The students that they did not engage us for came 30 uh -huh. in terms of th out of 36 states. Uh -huh. So their performance went from 27, 28. Then we touched them. They went to number four. Then they went from number four to about number 30. And then the governor said, look, okay, yes, it is what Fela and his team did. So let's do it again in 2011. But the governor then said, um, but we'll do it after the elections. elections. <laughs> okay. And you know the story? <laughs> it never came. So, so that's mm. what happens when you sometimes place politics and power over the lives of people. Yeah. You sh we should have done that thing early. But because politics was the overriding thing. So I've always believed that the greatest challenge we face today 
is the role that politics plays in governance. Okay, and you're going into politics now. How do you think you can change that mindset? You because know, I was, I was politics <laughs> is a major game. <laughs> yes, it is. I mean, rightly or wrongly, it is a major game, and yes. you cannot deny that fact. It is. How do you prepare yourself yes. for that game? Well, I think that the first thing you have to prepare yourself is to be grounded in the values that you have as a person. In other words, don't let the game dictate who you will be and what you will do. Don't let them say, because this is how it is done in politics. If you know, and there are quite a few things that people have said to me, oh, you know, this is how it is done, and I said I will never do that. You know, the, the yeah, but when, you are when the in force in is against, we're going to have to take a shell break yes. now. And after the break, then we will allow you, I'll tell you from time to time that we would need to, hmm, we take calls after about 15, 20 minutes from now. And, of course, you get the number on the screen at the appropriate time. But after the break, we'll continue from where we just stopped. We'll be right back. Make your event a memorable one with captivating and well-organized event center at Lagos Television's prestigious Blue Roof with a capacity of more than 3,000 seats and a fully air-conditioned 750 seats combo hall capacity. Suitable for annual general meetings, government functions, exhibitions, religious activities, wedding ceremonies, burials, musical show, and many more in a well-secure environment. Spacious car park uninterrupted power supply and impeccable facilities. Take advantage of all of these at affordable rates. For inquiries, please call 0808-252-8742 or 0802-282-9898. Lagos Television Event Center, a tasteful event center for your delight. Yes, welcome back. Now, back to Feladiro Toye. Before we go into that politic game that I was talking about, what is the one thing that you think people don't know about you? Well, I think that most people may not know that I was almost born in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> Meaning? I was actually, my parents conceived me whilst they were lecturers in Canada. Uh -huh. and, um, and a few months before I was born, my father had a dream. And, and, and my mother told me that dream, um, you know, when I was about 11 or 12, you know, maybe much later. Mm. But she, she said my father woke her up literally and said, we have to take this one home. Yeah. And it's very interesting that, um, so at, at, at long term, at far due, far due into, into her, her, her pregnancy, yeah. they, they brought me and, and they had me in Oluya Lebado. <laughs> so I, I am the first Adetokumbo, which is actually on, you know, my, on my passport, you see, my name is actually Adetokumbo Olufeladrotoye, but I'm the only Tokumbo that you probably know, Oksone, that, that has only one passport. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I guess that's something that, that is very interesting. And, mm. and, you know, sometimes I look at it and I say, I wonder what my father saw, because my father died when I was only um, nine years old. Um, mm -hmm. So, so. Uh, well, did, did it take you back? to Canada. Well, no, no, I, 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 never, I never went back. In fact, I was, I was begging my mother. I said, look, you know what? I mean, can you not even use my antenatal uh, <laughs> documents? <laughs> but that was because at that time I had started to see, you know, I felt very cheated that, you know, they had done that to me. I thought they, 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 they took my right from me. But I realized that today, if maybe if I was a Canadian citizen, maybe I would not have the passion that I have for Nigeria. Mm. And one thing for sure, if I was a Canadian citizen, I would not be eligible to run and for aspire for presidential president. So, so maybe my father saw something that I that maybe he saw today, okay. way ahead of time. Now let's see the back to political yes. game. Now, from all indication, it looks like the Nigerian mindset is politics is a different game, is a dirty game, is everything bad. <laughs> is it so? Well, one of the things I say to people is, look, you know, I think that there are good people in politics, and I think that there are, you know, some pe people that are Smart really people in politics. Yeah, well, wicked, evil. You know, they yeah. they must be there. Mm -hmm. um, the prevalent the prevalent uh, culture in politics is one that has, in a way, put the interest of, of the special interest of a, of a few people. Yeah. I typically call them the, the power brokers and the cabals mm -hmm. over the general interest of, of most, which is why politics has become one of the least uh, uh, desired jobs in, in global ranking of aspiration for field people, except maybe in Nigeria. You know, um, uh, one of the governors of the South Southern states, uh, oil rich states, had said uh, a couple of years ago that that one there are three. Th at that time, he said there were three um, 
industries that were thriving, oil and gas, telecoms, and he said governance. <laughs> and said, oh, how do you call governance an industry? He said, mm -hmm. well, because politics makes governance uh, a, a, a money-making game. Mm -hmm. um, but coming back to, to what it is that you've asked, mm -hmm. is, is politics dirty? Well, it, I would say, even if it were, what do you do when things are dirty? Because we wake up every morning with dirty mouth. Mm. We, we wear clothes and, and those and clothes get dirty, dirty yeah. right? We, we don't run away from dirty things. We clean them. That's what we do. We wash our dirty bodies every morning. We don't complain that the fact that it is dirty, let us take our body off or take our skin off. We wash our mouth every morning. So, so what do you do when politics is dirty? Mm. You wash it with clean things. So, but, you, but the clean water has to be a lot to uh -huh. be able to wash the, so okay. you need not just a few people that will go into politics that have the right values, that have the right character, that have the right thinking. You need a lot of people and that is what my job is, is to get that critical mass of people that will come into politics and say, listen, if fella can do it, I can do it also. And, and that is already happening. We're mm -hmm. seeing some of the brightest and best young people that I know beginning to say, yes, you know what, I'm aspiring for governorship, I'm aspiring for uh, uh, Senate, I'm aspiring for um, local government, uh, I'm, asp I'm, I'm aspiring for State House of Assembly. Mm -hmm. So this is what it is that I'm excited about. And it's also the fact that, you know, when people understand that some of us may have to run for the office, mm -hmm. but the truth is that there will be more people that are required to vote them in. Yep. And, and, and so for me, what excites me is now that I'm seeing people that are saying, because of you, I went to get my PVC. And that's happening all across the place. And that, that excites me. What do you do to the man who is living in denial, believing that Nigeria is not a workable instrument for motivation, well, for transformation? Well, well, I think that every problem really is just an invitation to a solution. So if a man says there's no, Nigeria cannot be fixed, show him how Nigeria can be fixed. It's that simple. I, you know, what, if you, what if in trying to show, mm -hmm. for example, when you get there, mm -hmm. in trying to show, you meet a brick wall. Mm -hmm. You're hemmed in. You're not able to really express the talent God has given mm -hmm. to you, mm -hmm. the dream and passion that you're trying to exhibit. Mm -hmm. What if you cannot get through? You cannot break that ice. And I, and I quickly say that that happens all the time. We've seen it happen. Mm -hmm. Good people with great vision. Um, most times, the reason when, why they get into the place of positions of office and then not be able to do anything is because most times they came in on a system that was meant to disable them. And I'll talk to you about that system very yeah. quickly. You know, it's the selection system that empowers people to become elected officials or appointed officials that you is the problem. You said selection. It's the selection, not election. Hmm. I call it selectocracy. Hmm. It is a system of where a few people have the power to be able to decide who has the right and the mandate to run for office and to dream and aspire of, of helping their people. And, and so most times, because many of the, of the political parties that we have today do not have something called internal democracy. Internal democracy, Uncle Sonny, is when, when the members of the party, not just delegates, mm -hmm. but the members of the party have the right to vote. When the members of the party are the ones that have so the right to vote, of class it then, yes. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, that's what we see in the United States, where we borrowed democracy from. That's what we see in the United Kingdom. In, you know, you well remember? The last one in the United States wasn't quite. Uh, it was. In fact, the, ex exactly the because. College? Oh, yes. I mean, so let me, let me explain yeah, how it okay. works. Oh, yes, so, basically, what happens is that they have at the primary level, they have something called internal democracy, meet, yeah. which means that the primaries, the members of the party will go and vote for which of the aspirants they wish to express their, their vision and to actualize their, their, their mandate, okay? Mm -hmm. So it is they that will now choose. The delegates of those parties go to the convention, but they don't have any power. Mm -hmm. They can only say what the people said. So let's say that even in the time of uh, Bar so Barack they Obama, effectively and representing they're just the representing people. the people. Okay. You, they, even if the delegates voted for a different aspirant mm -hmm. than the one that the people voted for. The delegate cannot go to the, the convention and begin to do any kind of horse trading. He ha they can only say the people of Ohio say they want Barack Obama. Even if the delegates wanted Hillary Clinton, it doesn't matter. So you take the power out of the delegates and you take the power out of the godfathers mm -hmm. and you put it in the hands of the people. Can that work in Nigeria? It is working. I, my party, Alliance for New Nigeria, Mm -hmm. is, is premised on that, on that ideology, that it is the members of the party that will have the voting rights. That when you want to run, nobody can be stopped from running. Nobody, there is no zoning, 
There's no, you go, if you want to run, come up, share with the people what it is that you want to do. If the people want you, they will vote for you within the primary part, the primaries, mm -hmm. and that becomes, then you become the candidate. So Felado Rotoe is not a candidate of Alliance for New Nigeria yet. Mm -hmm. I will have to go through the process. And what Alliance for New Nigeria promises is a free, fair electoral process that is transparent, that is not in favor of one or against another. And this was the reason why I chose them. About six other political parties had, had approached me to tell me, Felad, please come and be our presidential candidate. I said to them, if you can choose me to be your presidential candidate, then you can choose a thief to be a governor. You, that means you, can, you still don't have internal democracy. I don't want the power to remain in the hands of a few people. I want the power to be in the hands of the members. You see the Nigerian project as um, going out of its present state, which is not it's not tied to one. I mean, the last government had problems. Mm -hmm. Previous one had problems. Mm -hmm. Almost every government, mm -hmm. whether military or political, has had problems over time since 1960. Mm -hmm. And the problems will continue to remain as long as there are power brokers and cabals who fund elections because the people that don't need money do not come out. And the people who don't need money, the enlightened people, will not get involved with the electoral process. They will not show up on election day because they were not part of the people who chose the candidates. Yes. So until you go and fix that problem, Uncle Sonny, we are still wasting time. Selectocracy is the greatest problem that Nigeria has. It's the reason for corruption. It's the reason why we have no education or lack of education because they don't want the people to become so enlightened that they will begin to ask questions. So keep the people poor so you can give them 500 naira or 750 naira or 1,000 naira. That is the thing. So how can you keep the people richer? Oh, well, it's very simple. You, what, uh, people get rich based on the value that they add. So teach the people. And get them into job centers that really are education centers and then begin to teach them not only on values but on skills and that's how it is you improve the quality of 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 the mind of the people and the quality of their skills and their abilities and then you create opportunity for them by saying things like simple if we have a job center as we will have skilled job centers anybody that hires from that skilled job center will get maybe say for instance uh, a month or two as tax rebate. So the salaries of the people you will get as a tax rebate. Uncle Sonny, wouldn't that sound great to you? Oh, it will sound great, especially <laughs> retirement but, approaching. But, but, uh, but, it, yes. but it is great. That's the way to do it. B build the enterprises. Government cannot provide jobs. What government should do is to provide the enabling environment for the enterprises, businesses to grow. How do you manage um, a system that has been so entrenched with things going wrong? disrespect for the rule of law yes. and the fact that the constitution has often been seen as needing amendments yes. and then there's some kind of amendment and then soon after there's also oh we this was ignored in this constitution mm -hmm. we need another amendment yeah. do you now think yeah. that we need another amendment well look i i think that w there are many conversations that need to take place around amendments and and some of it look do i think that the, the local governments need more more money to be able to run and deliver and improve the quality of the lives of the people? Yes. And I think that the, the local governments need to be physically autonomous. They shouldn't be getting their money from any governor. Most of the governors today are the ones who decide how much local governments get, yeah, even no matter what it is. So, right. so those kind of things need to be fixed, yeah, right? Yeah, but I need to take you back. Yes, tell me. Respect for the rule of law. Yeah. So, 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 so this is very interesting because, like you, were, like you said, that we found something that is known to be true, that everything rises and falls on leadership. That if you get the right leadership, somehow the values of that leader will go into layers and cascade down the layers of, your, of, of what you call your rank and file. And therefore, if anybody violates those values and you're very quick to be able to take and, be, and like, the, like justice, declare that if, if this person has done wrong, regardless of who that person is, to you, how close they are to you and whether they come from your zone or not, that you are fair in the way that you met out consequences, Everything will change. It is about leadership. Everything is about leadership. We know it is about leadership. We've always known. But the question is, do we have the people who are willing to stand to be the right leaders? You just asked yourself that question. Yes, sir. Because the people who are willing to, is a matter of these people. What, have they become so used? Okay, I'll take it. You are, you are a youth, right? <laughs> I don't know if there's any other thing. Called <laughs> now, this youth wants to be president of Nigeria. Mm. President of Nigeria 
is the highest office mm. in Nigeria. Mm. Now, we are aware that youths who have had the opportunity to serve in government mm -hmm. fell into the same problem mm -hmm. that they are fighting against. Because the same system that produced the people that had the problem is the same system that is producing the youth in governance. As long as any youth has to go and beg a godfather somewhere and prostrate, that youth will become more, uh, will bear allegiance to that godfather as opposed to the people that he's supposed to go there to represent. What if you get to the godfather now he gives you a chance, or he doesn't give you a chance, and nobody looks your way. Yeah, typically that's what so happens. So we need wait. to create a new system, mm -hmm. which is why anybody that does not want to beg any godfather, that has always dreamt of really serving their people, should come to parties like ANN. And I don't think ANN is probably the only one. But can at least they should. ANN, ANN is Alliance for New Nigeria, and okay. it's online, yeah. so anybody can go and Google Alliance it. For Alliance for New Nigeria mm -hmm. Go and Google it, go and find out. Come into the office, ask people. Ask the guys there, okay, is it true that you guys have internal democracy? Is it true that you guys are not doing zoning? Is it true that I don't have to beg anybody to, 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 to aspire for office? But you have to understand that there needs to be a template, a structure. Oh, yes. For there to be some kind of internal oh, yes. democracy. Oh, yes. Yeah? That structure be leadership, mm -hmm. the middle, and the... The bottom. Oh, yes. And ANN does have, because we again don't forget that as a registered party, you must have, you must have presence in 36 states. Yep. And, you, and the capacity to build uh, the structure is done very quickly. And, and we're, I think that, and I won't be surprised, that ANN is probably the fastest growing party today, also in because we are very, you know, cutting edge. You can register online on uh, allianceforneunigeria.org. So, for instance, people are, are registering every day and people are uh, several times people reach out to me and say hey fella i just registered on ann you know i mean so this is what i'm trying to say right we'll take the a short break now and uh, again we're going to prepare ourselves to make calls when you call us you'll see the number on the screen is 0700 call sil C A W L L S I L. now the number to call will be written beside 0700 call sil we'll be back after the break Make your event a memorable one with captivating and well-organized event center at Lagos Television's prestigious Blue Roof with a capacity of more than 3,000 seats and a fully air-conditioned 750 seats combo hall capacity. Suitable for annual general meetings, government functions, exhibitions, religious activities, wedding ceremonies, burials, musical show, and many more in a well-secure environment. Spacious car park uninterrupted power supply and impeccable facilities. Take advantage of all of these at affordable rates. For inquiries, please call 0808-252-8742 or 0802-282-9898. Lagos Television Event Center, a tasteful event center for your delight. Yes, welcome back to Sunny Rabo Live, Maiden Edition, 1st of April 2018, and this is Lagos Television. Uh, yes, Lagos Weekend Television, that is. And um, I have a great name, Fela Drutui, uh, an aspirant, a young man who believes passionately that the youth needs to lead Nigeria. And okay, we're looking at what's your manifesto. Okay, so, well, the beautiful thing about, about the policy and the manifesto is that we're going to be releasing it on the 29th of May, 2017. But the essence, 2018, 18, right? Okay. So, so, so it's one year, <laughs> one year, <laughs> one year to, to, right. to, to actually, you know, to, to swearing in. Yeah. Um, but this is the thing about it. The, the manifesto itself is, is honed around solving the key problems of Nigeria. Okay, what's the first most important problem that Nigeria faces today? Nigeria is a very fragile state as we are. Mm -hmm. We are, we are literally very fractured. So we need integration. We need unity. We need okay. national unity. Now calls are coming in. So, yes, we have a caller. Hello. If I could hear you, I can't hear you. So can you tell us? All right. So the call missed. Yes, okay. sorry about so that. So the first most important thing that we require right now 
is national unity. We national are national unity. It's a, we, it is a, mm. it's the survival of Nigeria depends on how quickly um, the next the next leader of Nigeria is able to unite Nigeria together mm -hmm. as a people. And to do that, we need to have a vision that everybody buys into and say this, we have a new Nigeria that we want. We have to be able to articulate and describe that new Nigeria so that, the, and, and what most people want is the same thing. I mean, people want a nation that works. People want a nation where the, it works for not just a, a privileged few, mm -hmm. but it works for everybody. People want a nation where they can prosper and enjoy good success without having to, to do anything that is illegal, without having to know people. They want merit. They want, you know, things like that. So the rest of the world believes that it's an African problem, that blacks, Africans cannot unite, they can't do things together, they don't believe in team spirit, yes. and all of that. Yes. And you see, we're talking about Nigeria, because what is Nigeria is the most populous. Yes, absolutely. Yeah? One and out of every has four a strong Africans. economy. Yes, indeed. And they're very talented. Yes. But we're not united. Yes. You're talking about that. Yes, and, and, w and the second thing this that... Isn't this an African so, problem? So no, it's not. It's a vision problem. It's a leadership problem. Africa may have a leadership crisis, mm. But most times it's a responsibility of leadership to, first of all, cast a clear vision that everybody wants to buy into. The second thing that, that leadership must do must be to share a set of values and exemplify those values. Mm -hmm. Those values must be things that are accepted by every tribe, every religion, every social strata. Mm -hmm. And I just gave you 10 of them. Okay. You know, that, and you ask yourself, are these the kind of things you want my, 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 you know, my children to be? Mm -hmm. um, and that, and once, once you say yes, that is it, that, that the things that will help you. So the first one is, is values and um, vision. The next one is values. And then you now look at multiple layers of things that help you to have integration at social level, at economic level. And these things sound like big things. But look, one of the things I always say is, if, if you were to be able to look at the United Kingdom, for instance, yes. what is mostly available and affordable to the poor is, 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 accep is, uh, is acceptable to the rich. Okay. Say, for instance, look at the London Underground. The mm. train, uh, the train st system in, in the United Kingdom, you go on it, you find the rich and the poor. It's clean, it's affordable. The same thing is what we should have here. Can you imagine what will happen if the president from time to time were to come into a place and go on public transport? Do you know what will happen? Mm -hmm. It will be amazing because the governors will know that we need to be able to improve our public transportation system because you never know when it is that the people are going to use it. Mm. So my point is that for you to be able to get uh, 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 national unity, yeah. you need to get the right vision, you need to get the right values, and you get the right policies that integrate us as a people. But that's not all. We need to have and improve the standard of living and the l and, and the quality of life of every Nigerian. Nigeria is is a blessed nation. Nations that are not as blessed as Nigeria, the people are living better than we. Why? Because most of the time, as we are today, the the economic and the commonwealth of the people does not serve the people. The commonwealth of the people is only serving the special interest of a few. Mm. Now, so when you have the right leadership, what you are going to do is to find out how do we improve quality of life. To improve quality of life, you need to have people earning good money. To earn good money, you have to help people to be skilled and knowledgeable on how to be able to add good value and then give them job opportunities. To get job opportunities, you need to be able to grow businesses. Businesses are the ones that give sustainable jobs. The so so, so, so yeah. government must then have an enabling environment that helps businesses grow. Yes. And, and but this do is you realize that people blame government? There are some who are also blaming the corporate world, yeah. the business environment. Yeah. So that's why I keep saying, is it a Nigerian problem? Oh, no. I think, you, I think we have a values crisis. Uh -huh. I mean, on, on my way here, we, we were just around, uh, you know, Alausa, the traffic lights there. And it happens all the time. Everybody's in queue. Yeah. And then just the, mi the, the minute that the, the, the mm. light turns green, yeah. people come out, go in front of other people and shunt them. And guess what happens? By the time that we got there, because of the number of people that had been shunted, mm -hmm. the light turned red. Oh, my drive, the driver felt so cheated, so angry, <laughs> you know, but this happens all the time. Is that a government problem? In part, but the government has put traffic light there. Exactly. It's a values problem. If you do the right thing at all times, if you respect, care and show respect to others, you will stay in line. Mm -hmm. And this is what it is that keeps people. The, the greatest difference in the quality of life of Nigerians mm -hmm. is going to happen when Nigerians begin to treat each other better. Okay. When Nigerians begin to show a different kind of, of mind, m you know, mindset and orientation. And that is the second, you know, that's when I mean that values is very important in, in changing the nature of who we are as a people. Okay, well. <laughs> but, uh, you yeah. know, but you have to realize that all of these things that we're saying cannot matter if, for instance, we don't have security mm. and we don't have power. The businesses cannot operate where there is no security. The 
the businesses cannot operate where there is no power. So you will see that that incredible chain from quality of life to, to having skilled workforce to creating job opportunities for them, to building the businesses that provide the job opportunities, to having the social infrastructure mm -hmm. that empowers those businesses to succeed. So these are many of the things that, I mean, look at security, for instance. Security, let me take that from <laughs> you, okay? Um, a whole war hero mm -hmm. of Nigeria, mm -hmm. specifically General T.Y. Danchman, mm -hmm. called on Nigerians to defend themselves <laughs> because of the, you know, there was, the, there was a, a, an incessant attack on human lives, you know, and resulting in loss of lives. Now he said, no, it's getting to be some kind of a sponsored thing, so Nigerians should defend themselves. Mm -hmm. If you were the president of Nigeria, what would be your reaction to that? Well, my reaction would be to, first of all, I, if I was the president of Nigeria, by I, the, the current problem, I believe we would have solved it. And, and, and I know that a lot of people say, yeah, 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 that's what everybody says. That's what, that's so what how how General Buhari said. Yeah. The, the problem is that, like we said, everything rises and falls on leadership. Mm. Some of the things that General um, T.Y. Danjuma alluded to, and there are three mo very key ones. Number one, he alluded to the fact that there was some kind of collusion with I within this whole uh, you know, terrorism. So it's almost to say that there are high-level sponsors okay. for these terrorist acts, which, which may then, uh, you know, be, be some people will say it's true mm. because nobody has been, uh, in a way, ha has been arrested. Yeah. Uh, and, and so that means there must be some kind of protection. Mm. Um, the second thing that he said, which is very, very dangerous, but it, it could, you know, one has to deal with it, is that the military itself has been compromised. Mm -hmm. that, that the rank and file or the, that the leadership of the military has been compromised, that therefore the military is not able to protect the people because there is some kind of compromise. So if, you that if kind you've got that, that kind of intelligence, what would you do Exactly what you do is you, first of all, and this is the most important thing, you let your chief of army staff know that your, of all the most important things that is, is there for you as a commander in chief, the most important thing is protection of lives and property. And to say, if this kind of thing happens and there's no quick action, taken, then you know that that's the wrong guy in, in the place. Yeah. Why would you keep a military, uh, a, a military man or anybody in position mm -hmm. if the person is not performing and delivering? If the, if the military are supposed to protect lives and property, and lives and property are being taken, kill, people are being killed, lives are being destroyed, mm -hmm. and we have not seen a change in rank and file, then, then there is, you, you ask yourself, how do you, how do you define what meritocracy is? Okay. So All right. So, so for me, Get the right people into every office and let them know if you don't get the job done, you will lose your job. If anybody knows that if you don't get the job done, you lose your job, they will get the job done. Okay. We've just been told that there's a bit of a challenge with the phone call. So if please, if you see what's the Twitter, Twitter handle and the Instagram uh, address is on the screen. So just send your questions to these screens and then to the screen rather, and then we'll know what to do to get to you. But meanwhile, the phones have been tried put together to mm -hmm. work better. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I got tongue tied today. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the anyway, this is Sunny Rabo Live and uh, we just have one last break before we go and uh, we'll be right back. Make your event a memorable one with captivating and well-organized event center at Lagos Television's prestigious Blue Roof with a capacity of more than 3,000 seats and a fully air-conditioned 750 seats combo hall capacity. Suitable for annual general meetings, government functions, exhibitions, religious activities, wedding ceremonies, burials, musical show, and many more in a well-secure environment. Spacious car park uninterrupted power supply and impeccable facilities. Take advantage of all of these at affordable rates. For inquiries, please call 0808-252-8742 or 0802-282-9898. Lagos Television Event Center, a tasteful event center for your delight. Yes, Sunny Rabo Live in its final part of this program. Yeah, um, we're going to look at, again, your team, if you have any so far. And then, what is Nigeria's situation? Political parties don't appear to 
work in sync. But that's understandable. In <laughs> politics, the party is paramount. Mm -hmm. But interplay of party politicking, especially when you have, um, you're running a government that everybody should work together. The first government, the last government, was quite intolerant of its opposition. And this government appears to be exhibiting a bit of that, but there's enough room for everybody to you know, speak his mind. We have only two minutes. What do you think? Well, I think that you, you said it all. Politics is usually about parties and power interests. Governance is about serving the people. What we should be doing is having less politics in governance. Democracy okay. is not about politics in governance. Democracy is about the power that is given to the people for the people by the people, which is one of the reasons why we, for instance, in, in we've chosen the platform that we've done, mm -hmm. where the people have the power to be able to, to choose and vote for their own candidates. But that's not all. We are going to do something that I hope may be novel. To a large extent, we're going to be showcasing the people who will probably be your likely ministers in the course of the campaign. Okay. That, in other words, the likely ministers of health are likely to be the ones that are going to be talking to you about health. I think that it is wrong for you to, to elect a president and not have an idea who his team will be. You should have an idea because it's a team that is going to serve you. Mm -hmm. And so, to a large extent, what we've said is we actually did something called the Critical Success Forum. And people were actually nominating peop, you know, names of professionals that will be able to serve in the agencies, the government agencies mm -hmm. that are responsible for each of and every sector. Mm -hmm. This is something new. So by the time that we are actually going, you would probably see it's not going to be just a fella. It's going to be several people, the kind of people who are likely to be your minister of health, likely to be your, your minister of, of technology, minister of power. You should know them. And guess what? Today we know them because they are professionals to a large extent. They are the people that are there. If we can get politics out of governance, Nigeria will move at lightning speed. We will have accelerated development. What we need is to get merit into governance. What we need is to get the brightest and best people into governance and let that be the way that governance is run. Okay, so it's been Sunny Rabo live and uh, I want to let you know that it's been quite an interesting, pacey conversation <laughs> and a maiden edition too that is exciting. I'm in great um, Well, I'd like to know also that um, every Sunday from 10 past eight in the evening, on Lagos Television, we'll be getting more guests. And next week, we have Femi Falano. So thank you for being with us, and I hope you've picked some for information on this. Social media uh, platforms are live, so just give your comments, and when we have the opportunity, we'll desperately or definitely reply you. Mr. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you so much. Yes. Thank you again for being with us on the show, and bye-bye now.